goodness, y'all. <laughs> it's been a long time. Do this thing still work? Jesus. I don't even know when. what's the last episode that I uploaded for y'all. But we're going to talk about that today, you guys. If you're watching visually, I have this line going down my face because the sun is going down. So, of course, the blinds want to play me. But happy Friday, you guys. I missed y'all so much. I missed sitting down and recording a podcast and just talking about things. I've just really been living, honestly. Um, I don't even know when the last time I uploaded the episode, but I feel like... Let's just let's just talk before we get into the topic I wanted to talk about today. Let's just get into what's been going on in my life. So the holidays already passed. We we are now in February, but I enjoyed my holiday season this much so much. You guys, first of all, um, well, Thanksgiving, I spent Thanksgiving at my mom's food was fire. We did not do turkey this year. We did um, roast beef. I cook the roast beef. Now, let me tell you, I, I make a good roast beef. Okay? Don't let no, don't let your mama tell you otherwise. My roast beef is the best roast beef that you'll ever taste. <laughs> and I forgot what other meats we had because that's how good my roast beef was because I don't remember what else they had. But my sister made some devil eggs with, with shrimp in them, like fried shrimp on top. Ooh, that was good. And, and she made a um, strawberry shortcake. Y'all... That cake was so good. Mm, 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 mm. So I can't wait for this Thanksgiving already. Um, then we had Christmas. So this year I was responsible for Christmas. I hosted a Christmas Eve party. We had so much fun, y'all. When you when everybody walked in the door, everybody had to take a shot, unless you did not drink. Like, for example, my mom, she does not drink. So, of course, she's not taking a shot. But... Um, Everybody had to take a shot at the door, so that was fun. Everybody was dancing. And what I loved the most about that party was that everybody was there that was there did not necessarily know each other, but everybody just vibed. Everybody vibed so much. Like, you couldn't even tell that they didn't know each other. We had so much fun, hands down. I feel like that was the best at-home event I've ever been to, and that was at my house. Like... We was late. Everybody was dancing, and it was a mixture. It was young people, older, you know, an older crowd, my mom, my dad. Like, we was just all enjoying each other. Like, it was, we had a lot of fun. And I feel like this was actually the first year where the twins was actually able to enjoy, like, to open gifts a little bit, rip the paper a little bit, play with the toys. Last Christmas, they was, they was about to turn one. Cause now they're about to turn two. So last Christmas, well not last Christmas because this Christmas is this year. Last Christmas was the one that just passed. So the Christmas before that, I feel like they really ain't know what was going on. They didn't care. They just want to sleep. Where my, where my milk at? That's what they was thinking about. And then new year's, I did have a new year's gathering at the house too. It wasn't as many people as the Christmas Eve party. We played games, had some food. So that was cool. I got a little bit too late. Too late at New Year's, taking shots, because the games that we was taking, we had to take shots, and baby, listen, I got a little bit too lit, so that was that, and now we are in February, and yeah, so all this time, I have not been uploading to my podcast, I have been uploading over on my YouTube channel, I've been uploading vlogs, um, other content, so that's on my channel, All Things Yvette. Um, but I just been trying to find a balance, you know, just trying to find a balance between it all. If you don't know or if this is your first time listening to me, I am a mother of four. I have a 12 year old. He just turned 12 January 21st. So that was fun. Um, so I have a 12 year old. I have an eight year old and I have twins that are about to be two on February the 18th. So it was um, it was just I was just trying to balance it all. Um, it is a lot sometimes trying to do content, record. It's a lot, baby. And I still work a uh, nine to five. So that's what's been going on in my life. Also in January, I gifted my boyfriend 
uh some Dallas Cowboy games. So the Dallas Cowboys versus the Redskins. He's a Redskins fan. My dad is a Dallas Cowboys fan. So me and my mom bought my dad a Dallas Cowboys ticket, and I bought my boyfriend a ticket for the Redskins. Well, it's not for the Redskins. To the game, okay? The game was in Washington, D.C., so while they were doing that, me and my mom, we went to the Hirshhorn Museum. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It was pretty cool, interesting, definitely some unique art in there. So it was just a quick little getaway. Um, they enjoyed the game. Dallas lost, but <laughs> they enjoyed the game. And, of course, Dallas is not going to the Super Bowl because I think, listen, let me not even get in line. I don't know who's going to the Super Bowl. I know, I think it's the Chiefs. And all the reason why I know that is because Travis Kelsey, that's all I remember because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just say that's a nice-looking young man right there. So, yeah, but other than that, mm, I'm just here, y'all, here. I got my hair done recently. I, this is the same hair I had last time, but instead of me having a middle part, I have a side part now, and it's straight. Other than that, yeah. So I guess we can go ahead and get into sweet and sour. Um, sweet and sour is where I tell you something sweet that's going on in my life right now and something that's a little bit sour. So... I'll start with the sour. You guys, the other day, on my way to get my hair done, first of all, that was, let me tell you about my day that day. First of all, I woke up thinking, oh, I'm about to go to the gym, have a little workout in before I go get my hair done, right? Thinking my hair appointment was at 2 p.m. Y'all, I got a notification telling me my hair appointment was at 12. And at that point, I did not wash my hair, dry my hair. I was trying to relax my edges. I didn't do that. I didn't, um... What else I didn't do? I had to wash the tracks. I didn't do that. Nothing was done. Nothing was prepared for me to go to my hair appointment. So I had to hurry up and go to Target because my local hair salon was not open. You know the hair salon that has literally everything that you can think of where you go to get everything. Because Target don't be having everything that you want. But the local hair salon, you know, I don't know if they all... Well, I know they're not all ran by Chinese people. But from where I live... Most of them are ran by Chinese um, people. So they be having everything in there. So they weren't open. It was like 8 in the morning. So I had to go to Target. I was able to get a relaxer. And then I had to hurry up and rush and, and, and do everything. So then I stopped at Wawa because, you know, nowadays, hairstylists, they don't take Cash App. They don't take Zelle. They don't take cards. They don't take Venmo, PayPal. They want cash. So, y'all, I went in Wawa to get cash, and I locked my keys in the car. So, I did all of this rushing just to lock my keys in the car, and I was late to my appointment. And luckily, she still took me because she was telling me if I was not going to arrive by 1230, she had to cancel. I didn't get there until, like, 1245, so I had to pay a late fee, but I really needed my hair done. I was like, I didn't just go through all of this. I ain't go through all of this just not to get my hair done. So, yeah, so that was a very hectic day for me. Um, it really made me frustrated, like, because I I already want a new car, but that really made me be like, it's time for a new car. Because my car is, what is it, 2000, let me pull out, because baby, I ain't got time to be trying to calculate things in my head. Okay, so my car, oh my gosh, who's calling me? So my car is 12 years old, right? 12 years old. And so that should tell you I don't have a push button start. So if I had a push button start, I would not lock my keys in the car. However, I don't have a push button start. But this year I am getting a new car. I'm speaking it into existence. I am getting a new car this year. I am not going another year with the same car. I appreciate my car. I love my baby to death. It got me from point A to point B to C to D to E. Like, it's been my ride or die, okay? I don't have no car payment, okay? I don't have no car payment. My personal property tax be like $60. Everything is affordable. But it's just time because there's little inconveniences like this, even though it was my fault. But still, like, if I had push button start, I wouldn't go through this, so... That was my sour. I will say as far as my sweet, my sweet is, y'all, I've been doing really good in the gym. Now, 
That is my sweet because this whole holiday season and even a little after New Year's, I fell off and I fell off bad. I was doing some drinking. I was eating whatever I wanted to eat. I was not in the gym. Like I had looked at my um gym like attendance for like December. It was like it said I had been seven times. Seven times out of 31 days. That's ridiculous. So I just and, and and that's coming from somebody that's used to going to the gym almost every day. So for me to go seven times, that means that I fell off real bad. So I've been doing so good in the gym and so good with eating right. That's the most important thing, y'all. Eating healthy. Okay, because if you're working out and you're not eating right, you just working out for nothing, which I've been doing for the past 29 years. Okay, let's deduct when I was a child. Okay, let's just start at when did I have my first child? 17. So from 17 to 29, I have not been eating right. I just been going to the gym and just not really like I did lose a lot of weight at one point. But I feel like I did that because I just was trying to look good for my birthday trip that was coming up. And then right after that trip, y'all, I let it all go. So right now, I feel like that is not more so of me trying to achieve a specific body by a specific date. It's just I'm doing this because. I want to be healthy and I want to look good. And that's another thing. At first I was doing it because I wanted to look good. Now I'm doing it because I want to feel good. I want to be healthy inside and I want to look good. I mean, you can't forget that part. Okay, baby. I'm trying to, this summer I'm trying to be naked. Okay. Maybe not naked, but you know, <laughs> um, I've been doing really good in the gym. I've been eating right. When I go to the gym at first I had to take like, I would be on a Stairmaster for 30 minutes. I would have to take a break at the 10-minute mark and then the 20-minute mark. And then it went from me to have to do that to only break at the 15-minute mark. And now I can do that whole thing, that whole thing without even stopping. Okay, per. So, and what I love about that is that I'm just not, I'm not just on the Stairmaster just working out just to work out. Like, I mean, I'm not on a Stairmaster just doing one level like I'm now and that's another thing y'all oh I'm getting so excited that's another thing because I'm not just doing one level I'm doing a hit workout on a Stairmaster so I'm like going up to a level 11 then going down up to 10 going down up to 8 going down so this is something major to me for me because I've never been able to do this and I just was tired of being unhealthy I was tired of being out of breath easily I just want to be my best y'all and I've never been able to experience my adult body in the best shape because I had a child at 17 I got pregnant at 16 so I've never been able to experience my adult body so this is something that's really really important to me and it means a lot to me and I feel like I was just telling my boyfriend I said I feel like this is the time like this time I feel like it's different I feel different and this is gonna be different this is something I'm actually sticking with and I've been fixing them dinners and then fixing me something separate because I can't eat what they're eating. It just, everything just feels aligned and different and it doesn't feel forced. And that just means a lot because at first I felt like I was trying to go so hard and just, I was trying to do it and I just couldn't find the motivation and the discipline. And now it's like, I, I don't have to find it. It's just there. So that's that for me. That's a lot. So that's really my, um, that's my sweet. Another thing my sour is, if y'all, if you looking visually, you see I have a band-aid on my finger, y'all. My nail broke. And my nails haven't broke off in years. So I was really pissed off about that. The good thing is I didn't um, feel it break. I just was in bed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, hold on. Something don't feel right. I looked at my hand. It was gone. And I was like, well, where is it? Y'all, I got in the shower the next morning. It was right there in the shower. I said, oh, there you go. But I'm glad it didn't hurt, though, because that would have been a whole nother day. I would have been pissed that it hurt and my nail gone. So, yeah, I'm not going to get it fixed, though. I'm just going to wait until it's time for a new set. And then <sighs> we're just going to go from there. But that's my sweet and sour. That's the update of what's going on in my life. My kids are good. My 12-year-old, he is getting so big, y'all. He is just becoming his own little man. I can't pick out his clothes no more. He hate what I pick out for him. So he picks out his clothes every day. In the morning time, I don't have to tell him anything as far as getting ready. He just do it all. All I have to do is wake him up. So he is just becoming his own little man. And honestly, I think that this so far, because I only can 
judge it up to this age because I haven't had a child older than what he is now. But I feel like that this is my favorite age that he's at right now because it's like we can go places and we can talk and have fun and he can laugh. And you know what I'm saying? Like if, if it's a child that's too, too young, like the twins age or something, what am I talking to them about? I mean, we're going to do baby talk. Like, I'll take Kaylani to Target with me and be like, you like this girl? And she'll be looking at me like I'm crazy because she don't, what she going to say, yeah? But, yeah, like, my my 12-year-old, he's definitely becoming his own little man. And then my 8-year-old, oh, Lord. <laughs> One day, y'all, I need, a, I need to create, I need to join a support group for him because when they say, yo, yo, middle child, your second born is the one that give you a run for your money. They was not lying. Because that boy there, every day, he <laughs> stressed me out. <laughs> so, but he's doing good. He's very smart. Report cards just came out yesterday. He made honor roll. And he's always made honor roll. He's so smart, y'all. He, 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 he's so smart and know everything. And that's his problem right there. He just talks so much. But... Yeah, he's doing good in school, and he is, he's hes just so funny, and he supports my content down, honey. I be going downstairs, he be watching me on TV, if I, I like, on TikTok, he be like, Ma, you got two more followers. I'm like, dang. He said, I only got 69 followers on TikTok, y'all, because I don't really be up there. But he was like, Ma, you had 69 followers, you about to be at 80. What, what he said? He said, you'll pass me soon. And I said, well, how many you got? He said, 80. I said, well, you got more than me. And he said... Yeah, but I know you're going to pass me soon. So let me tell you, him, that is one of my biggest supporters right there. Like, he is going to make sure that he keep up with my content. He watch it. He going to tell me about it. He, listen, and he always be wanting to, like, he wants me to make something. You know how, like, they be doing those little mukbang. What are they, mukbang? But we call them mukbangs. But he wants me to fix something. He always watching them, like, eat fried onion rings mixed with, fried with hot cheetos y'all every time i have to make up an excuse because i'm like listen i'm not eating that <laughs> so yeah he's very much so into that and then the twins are getting so big and they i need a separate support group for them because they move so much y'all they get into everything every they find things on the floor and i'm like how did you find that how did you even see that i guess because they're so low to the ground that they can see it but now y'all they know how to get out their crib they know how to hop out the crib what am i gonna do they know how to hop out the crib i took off the relin and turned it into a toilet bed and now they won't lay down i'm constantly having to go in their room and then guess what else they do y'all they unplug the camera so i can't see what they doing when they get out the crib listen i don't see how stay at home parents do it because baby listen i would be in the bathroom crying we'll all be crying because i can't do it i'll be so excited to drop them off the daycare don't let the daycare be closed baby because listen i am that whole day i'm miserable okay i'm a weekend mama i'll see y'all 24 7 on the weekend okay but monday through friday y'all going to that daycare from eight o'clock to five so that's the update on my kids, y'all. Um, as far as how I am mentally, you guys, I'm kind of in a space right now where I'm very uncomfortable. I'm in a space of being uncomfortable. I'm in a space, I'm in a transition. Um, I really wanted to talk about how the emotions and how we feel when we are going through a season in our life that's not so great. You know how they say the rainbow after the storm. I want to talk about the storm. And like, I feel like right now I'm going through the storm. And that's not to say that my life is going bad right now. That's not it. I just am really in a place of being uncomfortable. And I feel like, a, like, the only thing that I can relate it to is that I feel like I feel like my physical reality is showing one thing, but in my head, I'm somewhere else. So it's kind of frustrating because what I see around me is not what I see in my head. So let me just let me tell y'all how I feel. So as I said, I still work a nine to five. As y'all know, I also do content of course, because you're either listening to it or watching it right now. When I 
first okay so i've been working for my job since 2012 and i was in the same position at my job on the phones all the way up until 2020 right miserable miserable um i would say the last before i transitioned into my new position and I was on the phone. So I would say like the last year or so, I was very miserable at my job. Like I was just miserable. I hated it. I hated going. I did not want to be there. And I remember I had went out of town. Me and my boyfriend went on a vacation. So I was gone from my job for like a couple of days. And when I got back, you would think, okay, I had a refresher. I'm back refreshed. Time to go to work. Y'all, when it was time for me to go to work, I couldn't even get out of bed. I couldn't even get out of bed because I was so miserable. I just, I remember I was laid up in the bed crying and I had end up calling my job and letting them know that I was, well, not letting somebody know we got like an automated system. I said that I was going to be coming in late because I don't think at that time I could have afforded. I ain't had no PTO because I used all my PTO. As soon as my PTO hit, it's gone. That's how miserable I was. So I really couldn't afford to, and you know, if I, if we didn't have PTO, we would get points because of taking away from our attendance. And if you get too many points, baby, you better chuck them deuces, you fired. So I remember I really couldn't call out for a whole day because I couldn't afford to have that many points applied. So I had called out half of a day. I forced myself to go to work because I ain't had no choice. And when I finally went to work, I was just sitting at my desk, y'all, and I literally start having an anxiety. I don't know if it was an anxiety attack, panic attack, whatever. I just started hyperventilating, crying, couldn't control myself. Mind you, I'm in a call center, y'all. So I'm sitting here trying to control myself at my desk because I felt like I was about to lose my mind. So instead of me just going in the bathroom and taking a breather and getting myself together, I decided to email, well, I am my manager, Luckily, I feel like that everything aligned how it was supposed to because I just told my manager, I was like, can I please just go in, go in a separate room and talk to you? Because I just needed to express how I felt. And like, luckily, y'all, she was somebody that understood what I was saying because if it was somebody that was like, didn't care or somebody that was just looking for a reason to report me to HR that I'm tripping, like this, this girl done lost her damn mind. You know what I'm saying? It would have been bad. But, you know, I just went in there and I expressed to her how I just feel so stuck in my position. Now, mind you, at that time, I was not even trying to apply out. But the reason why I wasn't trying to apply to a different position was because I felt like any position that I could get, it was not going to pay me what I wanted to be paid or I didn't have the qualifications for it. So I just didn't try. So I was miserable because I'm like, I don't want to be in this position, but I feel like there's no other position that would hire me, but I didn't try. So she was just telling me that I have so much potential and that I've been here for so long. And it's like, why am I not trying to post out or do something else or actually get into a leadership role to where I could teach other people you know I'm saying what I've been doing for all these years, but honestly, y'all, I didn't want to be in a leadership role. Like that's not, that was not my goal. Like I didn't want to be in a leadership role. So I didn't want to be in a leadership role and I just didn't know what position I really wanted to do. I felt like no position. I didn't want to do no position. That's what it was. I didn't want to do no position because I felt like no position, the, the position I wanted, I was not going to be able to get. So after I had that breakdown at work, I just was like, Yvette, you got to do something, baby, because you got to work. You got kids. You can't just be out here winging it. So it's like I had to do something. So I applied for a position. The position that I applied for, y'all, of course, I'm not going to tell y'all exactly what position it is and all who I work for and stuff because I can't be having that out there. But the position I applied for, you ever looked at a, a application and you be like, all of these requirements, I meet none of them. <laughs> so that's how it was when I was looking at that that application. But I still applied. And when and and even the role that I was applying for, it was like a role where you had to have previous experience in that role 
And I didn't have any experience in that role, but I still applied. And y'all, that was the easiest interview I ever went on in my life. Matter of fact, I didn't even have to go into an interview. The interview was over the phone. I never even met anybody face to face. It was so easy, so easy of an interview. And I got hired. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it because I was like, what? Me? Y'all sure y'all want me, Yvette? Like, first of all, I don't even have no experience in this role, first of all. Second of all, the pay that y'all saying, y'all want to give that to me coming from what I was just making? Like, it just, none of it lined up in my head. I just could not understand it. Like, me? This all it took? All it took was for me to apply myself? Like, that's it? (laughs) So, I just couldn't believe it. So then when I got into that role, y'all, everything I could ask for, everything I could ask for. I was not on the phone. I did not have to talk to people. Anybody I had to talk to, it was only internal people. I didn't have to talk to people outside of the company. Um, It was a flex schedule. I could make up my own schedule as far as what I wanted to work. If I needed to take time off work, I didn't have to use PTO. Um, It was just perfect, perfect. And then COVID hit. Well, at that point, the job was you work from home two days out the week, come into office three days out the week. At that point, then COVID hit. So they sent everybody home. And now that COVID is kind of dying down, they said that we didn't have to come back. So I've been working from home since 2020. And, you know, I got pregnant with the twins in 2020. They stayed home for the whole first year. So everything just aligned perfectly. And can't nobody tell me that was nobody but God. Nobody but God. Because, first of all, I don't even see how I got that role with no experience. And how did I get a job to where everything that I wanted in my mind, I got? I didn't want to be on the phone. I didn't want to have to deal with people outside of the company. I didn't. I wanted to have a flex schedule. I wanted to be able to have more time to where I could maneuver around my kids' schedule, drop them off to daycare and their school, be able to pick them up from school, drop them off to school. This is everything that I wanted. I wanted to be able to have that freedom to where I don't have to be in front of my computer 24-7. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never thought that this was something, and I wanted to pay. The pay exceeded my expectations. So all of these things I did not expect. And for me to have it, I just could not believe it. So all of these years I've been in this position, and now I'm not happy? (laughs) I literally prayed for this position. Prayed pray y'all I mean God please please God I will never ask for anything ever again in my life and just give me this position pray and now I'm not happy now let me say that I'm not it's not a situation to where I'm ungrateful I'm very grateful I I remember how I felt in the moment when I wanted this I'm very grateful I'm very grateful. Anytime I hear about somebody else complaining about their job, it just makes me even more grateful because there's really no reason why I have to complain. But now that I'm looking at everything of how all the cards align for me, I feel like that God was putting me in this position to be where I'm at right now and to excel further. So what I mean by that is that when I first got into this position, I was so at a high of like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I got this position that I wasn't putting my all into my content. I wasn't uploading really on YouTube. I wasn't uploading on Instagram. I wasn't putting no thought into it. If I did put a video out there, it was just to put some out there, but it really wasn't any like true intention behind it. So once I just recently started putting intention behind what I wanted as far as being a content creator, as far as me wanting to show my creativity, as far as me just wanting to expand in that area of my life, now it's to the point where I'm like, God, like, I feel like you made it so that I can have so much freedom with my job that I have now and flexibility to be able to be creative so that I can pursue my real goal And I just, right, I say the reason why I'm uncomfortable right now is because 
the same way I was uncomfortable and about to have an anxiety attack and panic attack at work because I was not happy. That's how I'm feeling right now. But right now it's kind of different because I can't understand why I feel the way that I feel because this is something that I always wanted. So, you know, it, it's taken is so that's why I call it a storm right now because I feel like something else is coming, but I don't know what it is. And it's giving me so much anxiety because I don't know what it is. I don't know what God is trying to show me. I don't know how he's going to align the cards like he did before. And that can get frustrating. And I know I'm not the only one that feel that way of where you want something. You desire these things that you want out of life or it's like you 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 want something so bad and then you get it and then you want something else. But I honestly feel like that us as God's creations, we're not supposed to be stagnant. We're not supposed to just flatline. We're not supposed to just stay in the same position. We're supposed to evolve. And, you know, when you're going through the journey, it's so hard to see it. It's so hard to see it when you're in it. When you're in it and you see it with your but you can't see it with this. It is so hard. It's so hard to have trust and patience. It's so hard. And that's where I'm feeling right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that it's not everybody not watching. I just pointed when you see it with your third eye, pretty much like when you see it with your mind's eye and your mind, but you can't see it with your physical eye, it can be hard. And... It's like God is it's, it's 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 almost as if God is taking me through a, a he's taking me through some internal struggles right now to make sure that I have everything in line, aligned internally before he takes me to the next level. And even though I know he he aligned the cards before, I'm gonna just say it, it's kind of hard for me to put my trust into that right now. Um, you know, it's a lot of days of where I just want to be like, you know what, forget this. I'm just going to be a mom. I'm just going to work my nine to five. I'm just going to work for this company, you know, for the rest of my life. And I'm not talking bad about the company. The company is great. I love the company, but I feel like that I'm such a creative and spontaneous person that I'm not meant to work for a company to where I'm like, I can't express my creativity on a daily basis. And let's just be honest, who want to do something for free all the time? I mean, we live in a world where eggs is $7. So I'm not trying to create content just for free for the rest of my life. I love it. Yes, I love it. I love doing videos. I love showing my creativity and showing what's going on in my life and showing others how I'm still a mother and still out here going to the gym, getting my body right, doing my makeup, getting my, you know, my hair done, getting my nails done while still being a mother. I love doing all of those things. But if I'm being honest, I don't want to do it for free for the rest of my life. I need to be able to take care of my family. I, I have so many dreams that I want to do, y'all. So many dreams of things that I want to do. And I feel like my main mission of what I want to show other others is that you know, just the whole basis around this podcast and still a mother, because like I've said time and time again, we live in a world where moms are looked at as they're not supposed to do certain things because they're a mom. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I'm not telling people, oh, to do this and that and this and that and still be a mom. Like, do I'm just saying, do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Of course, be smart. Your kids are still looking up to you. You still have to take care of your kids. You still have to take care of your responsibilities, but still be who you are because how can you pour into your kids if you don't have anything inside yourself? You can't pour from an empty cup. So that's my whole basis of my mission that I want to do with my content. I want to show people that, yes, I was a teenage mom. I had my first child at 17 and I have four kids under, well, I had four kids under the age of 30, but I'm still out here. I don't, I want to show people it's still possible that you could still chase your dreams and have a life that you love, even as a mom, because as a mom, 
And even my mom said all the time, when you become a mom, a lot of the things you put to the bayside or the wayside, what is it? What is that? Whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But you put that stuff to the side and don't even focus on it because you're so busy being a mother. And it is hard to balance both. Y'all, it's hard. Listen, baby, if them kids was at home with me, huh, huh, y'all think I... I wouldn't even be able to record this podcast right now if these kids was home with me 24-7. But when I got pregnant at 16, I thought my life was over. And that's what I was told, that my life was over. So it's very important to me for me to show that just because you have kids, that does not mean that your life is over and you can still express yourself. And to just not give a damn what nobody else thinks. Because guess what? Don't nobody got to take care of them kids but you and they daddy if they daddy doing it anyway. <laughs> but, you know, that's my whole mission with me creating content and being creative. I want to be my best self and I want to be my best self while still being the best mother that I can be to my kids. And, you know, that does get frustrating sometimes. And I get frustrated with myself a lot of the times, especially when I'm not doing that. That's why me chasing my physical fitness goals is so important to me because I have the ability to go to the gym. I have the ability to eat right. I have the ability to do all of these things. Did the kids mess up my body as far as the stretch marks and making me gain weight? Yes. But honestly, you guys, most of the time, unless you're just one of those mothers and and women that you just have snapback game on point, And you're just, it's just in you, just your genes. You just snap back and you just naturally small. But a lot of the times when you have kids and your body gets stretched to its maximum, you don't always snap back. And I feel like in my physical world, I see a lot of mothers that have kids and that they say that they want to lose their gut mom gut and their fupa and all of these things. And you know, saying that they don't have the time to do it because of their kids and such and such. And and I just want to show people that it could still be done. And don't don't think that my situation is any different, y'all. I have struggles just like everybody else. Like, it's nothing different or special about my situation. It's just everything that have been placed in front of me, every obstacle that has been placed in front of me, I have overcame that. And I guess that's what's frustrating me so much when it comes down to being an inspiring content creator, whether that's a podcast, whether that's with my YouTube, whether that's just whatever, making short form videos, whatever it is, because I do all of those things. Me not being able to do that full time and have this as a career, and I'm still having to divert my energy into my actual nine to five, that is something that's frustrating me right now. And that's why I say I'm in a season of transition because I'm just like God like what are you trying to show me because I'm just like God what are you trying to show me what are you trying to show me because I know you're trying to show me something but I can't see it like I just need you to write it on the mirror when I'm in the shower I promise I won't get freaked out or something just show me write a letter something baby send a text okay I won't tell nobody (laughs) might tell my mama though but just show me. And, and the thing is with God, it's not like that. It's not like that. You have to create a relationship with him so you can actually hear what he's saying. And, you know, it's not actual words, you know, sometimes it might be, you know, but it's not actual words that he's saying, you know, you have to create a relationship with him so you can figure those things out. So right now, the work that he's doing internally in me, y'all, oh my goodness. I could go on for days like the internal work that he is doing in me is something so amazing but I can't lie sometimes it does get frustrating when everything is internal and it's not manifesting into your physical reality and I feel like that's something that he's trying to teach me right now is to trust him and to be patient and to just know he got me because honestly he ain't failed me yet he ain't failed me yet and then when he do when he do show me Oh, he definitely going to show out. I know for a fact because y'all see how he aligned the cards with me getting what I wanted for. I didn't even physically say that these is what I these things are what I wanted in a job. He gave me everything I wanted and more. 
when he shows me y'all, I know he's going to show out when it shows in my physical reality, he is going to show out and I'm already mentally there. I'm just waiting for him to tell me that it's time. Like Yvette, it's your time. I'm going to align everything for you and here you go. And one thing I can say is when that time come, I'm just so grateful that I've been doing the internal work in me because that's what's more important y'all money cannot buy happiness i don't care what nobody say money does not buy happiness people might think oh you know money you could do certain things with money that will make you happier okay yeah you might can go on a vacation or buy a big old house but it will not provide happiness if god took away my if god gave made me a millionaire right now and i went in a big old house but my kids couldn't be there i would be miserable because my kids are my everything they're all i know so money does not buy happiness money can buy you things but it does not buy happiness so i'm so glad that i am doing the internal work right now because it's like when that time come that my life changes and I know it's coming, I'm going to be prepared for it. And he's making sure I'm prepared for it. And I just want to tell anybody that's listening to this video or podcast or watching this video, whatever you're doing, like there is going to be a rainbow after the storm. When you're going through the storm, trust and believe. I know how frustrating it is. Just two days ago, I wanted to give it all up. Honestly, y'all, two days ago. So I'm not perfect. I'm not speaking from a place of where I feel like this every day. Do I have days of doubt? Yes. Do I have days of feeling insecure? Yes. Do I have days of be like, what the f am I doing? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. If you're watching visually, it just got real dark. Because <laughs> the dead on sun is going down. Let me see if I can turn on this light. Oh, that helps. Okay. But you guys, my kids are currently pulling up to the house as we speak. I hope this video resonated with somebody. I hope it helped somebody. I, I'm I was happy. I'm happy I was able to share how I'm feeling with you guys. And I hope you understand the season that I'm going through right now and why I had to take a little break. But I am back. Okay. New videos every Friday. It's a as far the only update that I have for you guys is that I was uploading my podcast visuals to my personal all things event YouTube channel, I am going to start back uploading it to a separate platform because it's just too much, baby. It's too much going on. It's too much in the mixture. So all of the videos will be uploaded. All of the videos will be uploaded to Instill a Mother podcast channel. I'll make sure to link it. This will be the last video that's uploaded on this channel. So I'll, if you want to continue to watch the visuals, make sure you go Check it out on my other channel and make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with the episodes every Friday. And of course, it'll always be on streaming platforms, Spotify, all that, Apple Music, you know, you know the vibes. So, yeah. So as you know, we always end it with a book that I'm currently reading. It's something I wanted to share with you guys. But this time, it's not a specific thing I want to share with y'all in this book. I just want to tell y'all about the book. So the book is called The 12 Week Year, Get More Done in 12 Weeks Than Others Do in 12 Months. And it's by Brian Moran, Moran, let me say Moran, because Moran don't sound good, and Michael Lennington. And this is how it looks if you're watching visually. Um, if you're not, just type in the, the 12 Week Year. I got it from Amazon. Y'all, this book is amazing. It literally walks through how you can, just what it said, you can get so much done in 12 weeks that you usually get done in 12 months it just you know goes into detail about explaining of how to break instead of seeing quarters and you know every three months and things like that you know give yourself 12 weeks 12 weeks to reach certain goals and go hard with it because he was saying that most of the time in the beginning of the year we set new year's resolutions and then we'd be like oh okay I can slip up I still got till December and then you keep saying that every month and next thing you know you setting another new year's resolution so I feel like this book would definitely help somebody that has goals and they feel like they keep putting it off and they just want some insight on how to think differently so that they can get their goals a little faster so with that being said I love you guys Thank you for being patient with me. I promise not to go on a hiatus again. And I'll see y'all next Friday. Bye!